namaste. You know, there's a saying that life doesn't go in a straight line. <laughs> that it goes in a spiral. And that the issues in our life, which are given in the birth chart, astrological chart, come around every so often, right back to the same place where we were before. But we have so much extra added experience that we view it very differently. And this is certainly the case with me and music. <laughs> Music was always my first love. I started playing, singing when I was like three. Started playing piano when I was like four or five. I don't know how my parents tolerated my banging on the piano, but anyway, I'm very grateful for them that they did. <laughs> and so I was composing music by the age of 10 and 12. And so I got a very good education in music. I went to conservatory in Montclair, Montclair Conservatory, and I studied with people who had doctorates in music from the Sorbonne and places like that, really high-class music schools, and I won so many composition contests and stuff like this. But nobody could answer my question, how does music affect people emotionally? until I met my Indian music teacher, Ali Akbar Khan. And basically what he taught me is, music is a language. It's not a language of concepts. Although there is a, a conceptual language about music, that is different from music itself. Now, some people know the language about music, music theory, and they, they think they know music, but actually they don't. Music is a language of emotion, a language of the heart. It's a devotional language. It's a language that depicts our spiritual relationship with God. And this is the history of music in India, and all Eastern countries. This is the meaning of music, the musical forms of the East, Vedic music. And Vedic music is, just like Vedic astrology is the source of Western astrology, Vedic music is the source of all musical languages in the world. We can trace all languages, spoken languages, back to Sanskrit, and similarly, we can trace all musical languages back to Vedic Sangeet, which is, means singing together. So when we sing together, we experience moods. And these moods are often beyond what we can experience as an individual, which is one of the reasons why vocal music, and especially choral music, was very much cultivated by ancient societies such as the Greeks, the Native Americans, the Africans, and of course the Indians. Kirtan is a great science here in India. And this is used to praise and worship God in a certain mood. Well, how does the mood get into it? In other words, what is the source of the emotional effects of music? If music is a language, what is the vocabulary? What is the meaning? Where's the dictionary? <laughs> well, there is a dictionary, actually. It's a book, very old book, called the Bharat Natya Shastra. Bharat, of course, means India, Bharat Varsha. And uh, Natya means dancing. Shastra means a spiritual book, a holy book. And in Bharat Natyam Shastra, all the meanings of the various notes of music are given and their combinations and how this affects our intuitive knowledge. So all the Vedic styles of music are 
consciously created to have certain effects on our consciousness and actually to give us spiritual experiences. Each and every note of the scale has its own emotional effect. And these effects are pretty much universal even when you do tests among people from different cultures. So this is a very interesting area of knowledge and one that I learned at a very early age when I was like 23, 24 from my Indian music teacher, Ali Akbar Khan. And this is something I want to pass on to you because this is a way to bypass all the confusing intellectual, verbal knowledge of spirituality and get right to the intuitive, heartfelt realization of that same knowledge. So just like there are words and words about music, which are different from music itself and which have a very different effect from the, the music that it describes. Similarly, there are words and words and words about spiritual life. But knowing the words is not the same as the thing itself, <laughs> the experience of spirituality itself. And what is that? Well, it's something that happens in the heart, not in the mind. In fact, the mind has to be kind of taken offline <laughs> for this to actually work. So the different notes of the musical scale each have a specific spiritual meaning. And I'm going to go over those really quickly right now. First one is Sa. Sa. Sa is what's called unison. Unison means oneness. Uni means one, son means sound, unison. So the interval of a unison represents realization of Brahman. Of course, Brahman is everything. Huh? And when we realize Brahman, we have a feeling of merging like a, a drop into an ocean. The drop meets the ocean, and also the ocean meets the drop. <laughs> and this is Brahman realization. This is why the uh, greatest yogic process is the chanting of Aum. And Aum chanting is always done on the Sa. And when Aum is chanted properly, you can feel the harmonics moving up the nose into the third eye to awaken it. And this is why the Indian instruments like the Tanpura are built with resonating bridge so that these harmonics are emphasized. Here each note has a little mini Aum. Huh? So the whole musical system of India is built on Aum. <laughs> this is such a wonderful thing. And simply by participating in this music, not just listening, but actively participating, you can get these same realizations. Now let's do the rest of the notes of the scale. Enthusiasm. It's like when you get up in the morning and you've had a good sleep and you feel terrific and you're just ready to go out and do whatever you got to do, huh? That's the feeling of Ri. And the next one is Ga. Ga. Ga is such a beautiful, beautiful note. It represents friendship. And just like when we have a good friend and we're feeling very close and affectionate, 
This is the feeling that we get from God. I love God. I love to sing it. I sing it a lot. These pitches are different from the Western scale pitches. You can hear the upper harmonics ringing when I sing these tones. That's because it's absolutely in tune. Next one is Ma. Ma. Of course, Ma means the goddess, Durga, Kamakshi, Tripura Sundari. Um, she is the wife of Shiva. So she is the creatrix. She actually makes the world. She's also known as Maya. Huh? Well, the world isn't real. It's just an appearance. But uh, while we're in it, it sure seems real. And this is an amazing hallucination, <laughs> which is produced by her power of illusion. represents Shiva, the male form of God. He is the witness. He is the controller in the sense that it's his desire that creates the material world. But he is not the doer. He's only the watcher. Uh, Ma is the doer. So when we sing these tones, we actually worship the God and the goddess. And how do we worship? by service. And this is the meaning of da. Da. Hear those, hear those higher overtones? Those are called sananana. Sananana means uh, summation tones and difference tones. And these are produced by our inner ear. Finally, ni ni represents the desire for self-realization, huh? desire to know God. And then, of course, it wants to move up into Sa. Niza. Because this is the natural direction. This is the impetus behind actually all of our activities to find God and merge with God and be with God forever. And that's the purpose of the Vedic music. Now, of course, there's more to it than that <laughs> because we can have chords. And in the chord, the root note, the lowest note, is the most important note and influences the expression of the whole uh, chord. That's why the natural gravity of harmony goes toward the one chord or the chord built on Sa. Even jazz harmony follows the same rules. <laughs> but 
that's getting very complicated and I don't want to get into that. There's a whole science of psychoacoustics. Psychoacoustics details how these intervals merge with our hearing apparatus and create signals that go to our brain which are interpreted as different emotions. Emotions are relationships and relations are always with another thing. So whenever two notes get together like there's a relationship and that relationship expresses a feeling. Like if you notice, all of the, the Sahasranams, the thousand names of God, are all sung around the note Pa. So this is because Pa represents God. So all of these tones put together give us like a palette of colors, emotional colors, to express different forms of devotion. So that means every melody, every chord, every voice huh, has a particular emotional meaning. And when these are combined together, they give us a wonderful, rich experience of spiritual emotions. But we have to know the language. That's why I made this video, so that you can know the language of music, the language of tone, that leads to intuitive realization of God. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.